My favorite game of all time is Shadow of the Colossus. Produced by Fumito Ueda's Team Eco, it had this amazing score, a unique line work and had this captivating, bare-bones storyline. There were so many people involved, it became visual poetry more than a game. And it all looked like this. Yeah. 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 That's it. Just you and a horse. The two of you traversing a huge landscape, defeating enormous creatures known as Colossi. You'd spend more time traveling from Colossus to Colossus than you'd actually spend beating them. And that's exactly what stuck out to me for all these years. The journey, the setting, the being in the world, the landscape of Shadow of the Colossus. But apart from being entertaining, poetic and memorable, I think there's more to the game. I think the landscape itself says something about our existence, about our very condition as human beings. Emil Cioran was a Romanian author, philosopher and pessimist. In 1934 he wrote a book called On the Heights of Despair. In it he asks the question, who is more unhappy, he who feels his own loneliness or he who feels the loneliness of the world? What Cioran is referring to is the split between what he calls individual and cosmic loneliness. The individual loneliness takes the person and drenches him in agony, making him an outcast in an otherwise seemingly normal world. Cosmic loneliness is something else. It's an awareness of the world's isolation. It's objective nothingness. Joran says of cosmic loneliness that it is as if all the splendors of this world were to vanish at once, leaving behind the dull monotony of a cemetery. I think that Shadow of the Colossus pushed the idea of cosmic loneliness as an integral part of our existence. The way wonder is in the landscape and how the landscape functions show how the idea is embedded into our existence. So what makes the game's landscape so special? Well, the landscape is vast, it invites exploring, it's quiet and indifferent, and does everything it can to not insist its presence on you. Its colors are subdued, it's homogenous and it's autonomous. The landscape is completely severed from the minimal story of the game, and it feels like it would be literally the same thing if you weren't there to play it. What's perhaps most striking is how the landscape reinforces the tragic fate of the hero. It focuses on the colossi, not on you. The colossi are grand and epic, wonder is weak and insignificant. The colossi are part of the landscape. Their bodies are made up of stone platforms, there's grass on some of them and they move seamlessly in water, air and sand. The landscape becomes a character through them. The loneliness shines through via the landscape's indifference. Wanda is not only alone as in he's not in the company of other people. He's also alone due to the landscape being indifferent to him, due to the landscape ignoring him. And this awareness of the cosmic loneliness is embedded into existence itself too. By riding on his horse, by defeating the Colossi, by killing lizards, Wanda is dwelling in the land as we are dwelling in our existence. In 1951, Martin Heidegger delivered a lecture entitled Bauen, Wohnen, Denken. Building, dwelling, thinking. In the lecture, Heidegger talks about dwelling as what the design does when it exists. Dwelling is the basic characteristic of being, of mortal existence. Dwelling is not passivity, it's existing while living, it's preserving oneself until death. In his later years, Heidegger talked of being as something that unfolds in time and space. It's a series of events being transformed and is constantly trying to make sense of its existence. To sum up, we take place. We happen. We occur. As human beings, we are part of what Heidegger calls the fourfold. The fourfold is a unity of four dimensions of existence. These dimensions are Earth, Sky, Mortals and Divinities. They are our way of grappling with existence. For centuries, we've tried to make sense of ourselves as dwellers on the Earth while gods are above us in the sky. These are not proven facts, they are culturally upheld notions. And that makes our existence poetic. The forethought is a beautiful construct. Belonging to such a unity is safe. It's a way of distancing ourselves from the cosmic loneliness seeping in. With his lecture, Heidegger inspires us to live in tune to the rhythm of the natural world, which is inherently lonesome. 
And this brings us all the way back to the beginning, just you, dwelling in the world. Shadow of the Colossus lays bare our deep need for connection. By removing all of the superfluous things, it makes it painfully obvious how we fear loneliness. A loneliness entangling our existence. Because existence is inherently lonely. Nothing would really be different in a significant way if we weren't here. So I can't tell you who's unhappier, he who feels his own loneliness or he who feels the loneliness of the world. And Emil Churan couldn't either. In the very same aphorism, he wrote, why should I bother with a classification of loneliness? Isn't it enough that one is alone? Thank you for watching.